A warm welcome to Empowering You for Victory. Mohan and I send our fondest love greetings to every one of you. Take note if you've been following from a Sunday night and Friday night. Not just for the sake of an exercise. Imagine if I came here on the scene and I, I did it like this. Good evening to every one of you. A warm welcome to the empowering you victory. So happy that you came. <laughs> now compare it to how I did it. Good evening to everybody and welcome to Empowering You for Victory. Mine and I send your fond our fondest love greetings to every one of you. Can you sense the enthusiasm, love, and passion in being positive? I'm helping you to express your life in an empowering state so that you can even achieve greater things. Tonight, I want to share with you on faith to develop successful habits. Faith to develop successful habits. You see, there are habits that can make you unsuccessful. And there are habits that make you successful. So habits that make you unsuccessful is a spiral downwards. Habits that make you successful is a spiral upwards. I want to read from Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to verse 30. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Praise God for his word. Understanding habits and character. Your dominant thoughts your attitudes of thinking creates or affects your emotional state. How you think, what you think, affects your emotions or creates them. Your dominant emotions influence your actions. Make no mistake. How you constantly feeling is really going to have an effect on your outward actions. Your continued actions create your habits. If you keep doing something over and over again, you are creating a habit. Now, your character is made up of your habits. So if you have a successful character, you will be an achiever. If you have a character that's made up of unsuccessful habits, as much as you want to be an achiever, you will be a failure. You usually get what you don't want. Now, I'm going to be dealing this week in successful habits or anchoring yourself to success. Everybody wants to be successful. Make no mistake. Even those that talk against it. Everybody wants to be wealthy. Even those that talk against money. And so you have to develop habits that make you successful because your habits determine your outcomes. Your habits determine your destiny. 
The first habit is to take responsibility as your friend. In other words, you become responsible for the outcome of your life. While the word proactivity is fairly common in management literature, it is a word you most probably won't find in most dictionaries. It means more than taking initiative. It means that as human beings, we are responsible for our own lives. We are responsible for our own lives. Our behavior is a function of our decisions and not our conditions. We can subordinate feelings to values. You don't have to live by your feelings. We have the initiative and the responsibility to make things happen. Look at the word responsibility. Response ability. It really means the ability to choose an effective response. What is an effective response? An effective response is a response that takes you to what you want in life and not takes you away from what you want. The ability to choose a response. Highly proactive people recognize that responsibility. They do not blame circumstances, conditions, or conditionings for their behavior. Their behavior is a product of their own conscious choices based on values rather than a product of their conditions based on feelings. So your decisions must always be based on your core values and not on how you feel that comes from your circumstances. Because we, by nature, proactive, we can easily make those choices. Reactive people are often affected by their physical environment. If the weather is good, they feel good. If it isn't, it affects their attitude and their performance. Proactive people carry their own weather within them. Whether it rains or shines makes no difference to them. They are value-driven, and if their value is to produce good quality work, it isn't a function of the weather being conducive to it or not. Reactive people are also affected by their social environment or the social weather. When people treat them well, they do feel well. And when people don't, they don't allow how they feel to affect their responses. Reactive people build their emotional lives around the behavior of others, empowering the weaknesses of other people to control them. Just think about that. If somebody else's weakness is determining the outcome of your life, haven't you given the power of your life away? Proactive people are driven by values. Carefully thought about, selected, and internalized values. Proactive people are still influenced by external in stimuli. It doesn't mean that we got no feelings if people hurt us, whether it's physical, social, or psychological, but their response to that stimuli is value-driven and not feeling-driven. It's very, very powerful how to live that way. No one can hurt you 
without your consent. Think about that statement. No one can hurt you without you allowing what they say or do to hurt you. It is our willing permission or consent to what happens to us that hurts us far more than what happens to us in the first place. I admit this is very hard to accept emotionally, especially if you've had years and years of explaining your misery in the name of circumstances or someone else's behavior. But until a person can say deeply and honestly, I am today what I am because of the choices I made yesterday, that person cannot change the outcome of their lives. Bruce Baxton said these words, nothing splendid has ever been achieved except by those who dared to believe that something inside them was far superior than the circumstances on the outside. And so, dear friend, take responsibility as a friend. I admit it's a bitter pill for you to swallow. But I guarantee you, when you swallow it, it becomes the sweetest experience of your life. Because if you are responsible for your own life, that means you can determine the outcome of your life. If someone else is responsible for the outcome of your life, you actually become a slave to them. Don't give the power of your life away. You are responsible for your own happiness. Nobody can make you happy, and nobody can make you angry, and nobody can make you sad. You make yourself happy, angry, or sad. And so when you take that responsibility, that's a first habit. You taking responsibility for the outcome of your life and you stop today the blame game. Stop blaming your history. Stop blaming your parents, your father and your mother. Stop blaming your circumstances. And God has created you a free moral agent. You live by a conscious choice that you will subordinate feelings to values. I speak into your life that you are a value-driven child of God. God richly bless you. Allow me to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for all our online viewers. I pray for every one of them, Lord, as we begin this week to go through different habits. I pray you will indelibly write it upon their hearts that their characters are shaped by their habits. Their habits are shaped by their actions. Their actions are shaped by their feelings and their feelings are created by their thoughts. I pray for everyone today, Lord, that they are empowered to get the best results in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock, empowering you for victory. Goodbye.